doing? This is Tom, and it's Tom Styles, and it's a jungle out there. And it's full of radio frequency interference. And this is a little guide that one of my subscribers sent me. He wishes to rename, rename, remain anonymous. Thank you for sending me this guide to review. Let's move this lady out of the way. Strange format. I, I like these books or reference material or whatever in the spiral notebook so that you can lay them down flat you can fold them back like this I like I like that idea I showed you a guide a few weeks ago that was uh, kinda in the standard format shape but it was smaller book shape this is in like a notepad shape and uh, it's a little cumbersome for me, and you'll you'll see why when I try to go through it. But anyway, the name of the book is Radio Frequency Interference RFI Pocket Guide by Kenneth Wyatt and Michael Gerber. They're both amateur radio operators. So um, let's go through this quickly, and I'll tell you uh, kind of what's inside, so you'll have some idea whether you want to get this book or not. It basically covers everything about radio, in, radio interference. Uh, what it is, where it comes from, how to track it down, and how to eliminate it. So I'm just going to go over it very quickly. And as you can see, I'm struggling with turning the pages. It's got um, about 80 pages, and these are 3 by 5 inches. So they... Um, you know, about the size of a pen. Um, so, you could get about four of these on a standard size book, these pages, and uh, front and back. So, you divide the number of pages, total number of pages here, by eight, and it's about 80 pages. So, that'd be about 20 pages on a regular full size book. So, that kind of gives you an idea of the volume of material. Okay, let's just quickly go through the book and show you what's in here. First, it talks about what is RFI or EMC and what is conducted emissions. Now, I worked at Honeywell and we did uh, RFI testing on the guidance systems that we built for uh, guidance, excuse me, aircraft navigation systems. Um, to make sure that there were low emissions and they were not susceptible to RFI. And that is a part of the government approval cycle. The FCC, for instance, uh, does this type of testing on all consumer electronics uh, released in the United States, um, including things that are built outside the United States that are brought into the United States for sale. So they're looking for emissions uh, from these devices such as radios, uh, modems, uh, monitors, computers, and they have to meet a certain level. Although based on my Samsung monitor here, the criteria must not be very tight because that thing really produces a lot of RFI so much though, so that I can't listen to a shortwave radio on this desk using its own antenna because that with that monitor on I have to keep that monitor off another thing that creates a lot of RFI in, in my desk area is my mouse my uh, wireless mouse where is it there my wire this guy because number one he has to because he's transmitting to a receiver that's connected to my computer so it's typically uh, transmitting uh, uh, the signal. But it needs to be in the barrel, narrow band range. Uh, I'm talking too fast. Let me slow down a little bit. Okay, it needs to be in the narrow band width that the device is made for and certified for. But sometimes it goes beyond that. And that's when you run into problems, such as I have in my office. So anyway, um, Here's a, a pictorial of what these emissions look like if you look at them in an oscilloscope. 
Here's some uh, tables on, here's frequency versus wavelength, just the conversion between frequency and wavelength. And it gives you the uh, allocations for frequency bands in the United States for the AM band, the FM band, the television band, and that's all it gives. It doesn't mention shortwave. Very interesting. So it's kind of a limited spectrum of information there. And then it talks about the types of interference. Here's a, a, an oscilloscope, oscilloscope picture uh, of some emissions. You know, these little spikes here, those shouldn't be there. And what else? It talks about uh, cable television, leaking cable in your uh, cable television setup at home. Uh, it's another source of emissions. Your routers and uh, your modem, they put out uh, emissions. Uh, your router, of course, is has a wi wireless uh, port to it so that your laptops, for instance, can communicate with that modem. And that's uh, a form of emissions. Um, and it has to be in a narrow band, but unfortunately sometimes it gets outside that band and gets into the shortwave band and you hear it on your shortwave radio. Okay, other sources of uh, RFI, um, your faulty light switches and your AC sockets. And where to locate these emissions? Where, where, they, where can they come from? I just mentioned a few myself already. Um, and then how you, what do you use to track down these emissions and then later on it talks about how you can get rid of those emissions. So here's some equipment that you can use to track down the emissions. Um, and let me go back, I skipped over it. Uh, back here, no, like I say, I don't particularly like this format. Have trouble turning the pages. And where'd it go? Okay, anywhere on one anyway, in you know, one of these darn pages, it talks about using a just a plain AM radio to uh, track down the emissions. And then here's here's some ideas of how to uh, squelch these emissions. Here's where you use a, a toroid core and take your cables and wrap around it. That will reduce emissions from these cables. Here's an RFI filter that you put on your AC line before it goes to the device. And it talks about uh, actual reporting a serious RFI problem in your area, in your neighborhood. For instance, it could be the power lines. could be the cable TV line. It could be uh, a big power transformer in your backyard. I've got one of those. Oh, here it is. I just got ahead of myself. So here's a AM radio. This is a, a Grundig Mini 400 that you can use to track down AM. And you tune those and then walk around your house. And as you get closer to the source that's in your house, it, you would hear on the AM signal, you'd hear this big noise and therefore you can like maybe like for instance if I brought an AM radio up to my monitor it's gonna go buzzing all over the place because my monitor is putting out all kinds of RF noise so that's another place then it gets into some sophisticated expensive equipment that can be used for tracking down this RFI here's a handheld uh, probably five hundred uh, six hundred dollar piece of equipment. It's a portable spectrum analyzer. That's what that is. And it goes on and on and on. And then it talks about uh, the FCC laws. And then some equations of, of the amplitude of the RFI emission. And a bunch of cab uh, tables and equations. 
useful websites to get information about RFI, some uh, definitions of terms, you know, what megahertz means, what kilohertz means, and uh, then some actual definition of words, what uh, capture effect means, what CW means, and that's about it. So that's the guide. Um, usually I say these guides and things like these ebooks and stuff like that have the same information that you can get off the internet, but they're all in one concise package. This one, this particular one, is a little too pricey. You can get this off of Amazon and it's $24.95 for basically a full-size book would be only 20 pages. But it is convenient and it's got everything, you know, captured off the internet and put in a book. But $24.95 that's a little steep. I would, this is just me now, this is my personal opinion. I would say the information in this pocket book could have been put in an ebook. Now, it wouldn't be as convenient, because you know, you, this you can carry around and put in your pocket and carry around. It wouldn't be as convenient as an ebook. But for an ebook, I would say it would only sell for $2.99 maybe $5.99, but that'd be it. Not $24.95. To me, that's too much money for what's in this pocket guide. That's just way too much money. So anyway, that's my opinion, and I'll, ha I'll have to live with it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this show, please give me a thumbs up. Bye-bye.